What's up, everybody? Today I'm working on pushing stuff. This is going to be part of uh, the way puzzles work. Is sometimes you can push stuff, just like the original Zelda, just like Zelda One, where you can push like a pillar and the secret door opens up and stuff. This is going to be a mechanic. So I need to work on uh, this mechanic to be able to push stuff and have that open puzzles and stuff like that. So first thing I need to do is find an area where um, I can uh, push something. And probably the best place to do that would be in the dungeon. So I'll go into a dungeon and um, yeah, find an area that has a puzzle and turn it, and it should right now be a fire puzzle, because right now that's the only way you can solve puzzles. So you have to use your your lighter or any kind of fiery equipment to light stuff on fire. I think that is this one. This door locks and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is one of them. Dungeon 4, or no, Dungeon 1, it did make some stuff that, um, limited the puzzle pattern types, let me go to that puzzle pattern, puzzle 1.2.3.4. What's up space my name? Welcome man. <clears throat> Welcome to the live stream today. How are you doing man? Saladongs, greetings and well met. <laughs> and well met. Yes, I love it. I love it. We are well met. Ah, here it is. Okay, this is where I tried to solve this problem by using pillars instead of unlit pillars. What's up, T? Thanks, man. Last stream? What you mean, last stream? So all of these should be... At least on the pillar for now. Well, we're going to move this into, yeah, into a different type of pillar so that you can push it. So this is going to be a K-tile push pillar. Yeah, I should get that going right now. Okay, so let's go to um, constants dot h, and I'm adding a new tile type. This is um, this is a pillar that you can push. Unlit pillar. Push pillar. What's up, Pedro? Uh, no, no, this is not the last stream. No. The last stream. There is no, there is no planned last stream ever. This could go on for indefinitely. For all the days that I'm alive on this earth. Who knows? I don't know. Yes, yeah, yeah, Teak. Nice, man. Here's your video, right? Swarmodian Explorer. Hey, what's up, Alex Pita? Bellazio, man. I'm checking out Teeks's, uh... Oh, dude, I love it. Oh, yeah. Reminds me of... Reminds me of ASCII art, and I love ASCII art for some reason. I know it's not ASCII art, but it reminds me of those old, like, rogue dungeon... You know, like, rogue? The game rogue? You also got a 30 second one? Good job, Teak. Yeah. That 30 second one you, you'll need for sure. In fact, that should probably be your default, right? It's like your the shorter the shorter um, trailer should be the one that plays by default. Because most people, well, this is my opinion, but most people in general are going to be the kind of people that want the 30 second version. It's your, it's your hardcore fans, the people that really, really are into what you're doing that are going to want to watch the, the longer version, you know? But... I could be wrong about that. I love the control your swarm part. Mm. 
Nice, this already is a default. Cool, man. Yeah, you got it. You already got it. You already got it, man. So I'm working on pushable pillars today. I gotta turn the sound down just in case this copyrighted music could flag the video. Create and share your own maps. Oh, yeah, we don't need to put this in the tile, in the constants. All right. We just need a possible function. Oh, we need a function. Area.age. Unlit pillar. We got another kind of pillar here. Create pushable pillar. Let's hook this method up. Push pillar. Create push pillar tile. And this is going to be pretty similar to the unlit pillar tile. Oh, you composed it. Oh, okay, cool. Push pillar tile. Okay, this is going to use the entity.txt. We're going to go and find the unlit pillar. And create something similar, but this time we need, we'll call it the push pillar. Push requires valid pause. Yeah. I think I'll make it the same as the regular pillar for the moment, but it'll get its own, it'll get its own graphics. Eventually this will have its own. Yeah, okay, so this image is gonna be like that. And we flip it to facts. Let me just copy the whole pillar. And okay, it's got a category switch, mask, default mask, about the right size. Push pillar, let's make that a 2B. Okay, it doesn't activate change HP. Or does it? Yeah, no, it should actually. It should activate change HP, but not zero HP. I don't want this thing to ever be able to be destroyed. And it should have an instant recharge, yeah. So if it gets hit, it should reset too. So when the, when you come back to the screen, it should you should have to push it again to be able to work its magic. All right, good. We got that set up. We got a push pillar entity, the data for one, and now I want to use it. Doesn't have a fire entity. And I think, uh, you know what? It doesn't even need a puzzle flag there because all it needs is the puzzle flag here. Activate puzzle. Yeah, so push pillar. Looks exactly like a pillar, but it has activate puzzle. I 
I guess it also needs one more thing. It needs like a, a collision pushable. Yeah, I'm gonna need some kind of pushable collision flag. So constants.h k uh, collision. And we got all these different activates, colliding, we'll throw it here at the beginning. Pushable, we're using up a lot of flags here um, for collision components, but these collision components, a lot of this stuff, all these, actually all these activates right here, these really should be part of something else. I'm thinking of creating a new kind of component called the activate or the trigger component, something like that. It's just a very simple component. All it has is one variable, which, ha which is its flags. And so it'd be like anything that, ha that has to be activated, triggered, would have its own component for that. I think that's a smarter way to do this than to, than to be smashing all this stuff into the collision system. What's up, Zyanger? Welcome, man. Welcome. Okay, so I got activate puzzle. I got collision pushable now. So I need to hook that word up, constants.cpp. All right, so we got no remove, colliding, pushable. Pushable. And the last thing is when a, uh, the entity, the data for the entity needs the pushable, immune and pushable. Boom. All right, the last thing we need to do is make this, this um, to make the puzzle pattern smarter. So if it's a swordless dungeon, it will use the unlit pillars. So you're using fire in the swordless dungeons. And then in the regular dungeons, it'll use <coughs> the pushable pillars. So for one thing, it won't lock the player into rooms that it shouldn't. And secondly, it will be a different kind of puzzle in the dungeon. So more variety anyways. So okay, we, got, we should have the flags and everything set up. Let's get that pattern. All three of these patterns dialed in. So... All right, so I'm considering this this first pat this last pattern here with the four different dots. This pattern has four different pillars on the screen, and uh, the way this puzzle is going to work is uh, I want it to have one of the pillars be pushable. All the other three won't be pushable. They'll be identical in their graphics, so you won't be able to tell until you start pushing them and you realize that one of them is pushable. So. This pattern here is kind of the most difficult of these three patterns is if you have the four dots and and you're not in a swordless dungeon it's just more difficult because there's there's four different things you might have to push. So I need to work on pattern difficulty like a pattern itself can have an overall difficulty like this pattern four dots would be like a difficulty of like 0.25 or whatever the two dots would be like 0.125 and the one dot would be zero <clears throat> actually i think it already works that way don't i have a get pattern difficulty flag yeah i do all right let's get that Nice, EU, cool. Free domain, we'll take it. So check it out, one dot is pattern difficulty zero, two dots, 0.125, four dots, 0.25. All right, there, that data is hooked up. And now, I don't think it's gonna use it just yet. It's not gonna actually place the patterns smarter based on their difficulty. Everything is not really implemented here yet, but once I do implement this, this will be good to at least have that data, right? All 
All right, so I think the way to do this is to make a vector of V3i. This is the um, the puzzle tiles and randomize the elements. I don't have a randomize elements function. I know I do somewhere. I got this randomized thing I'm using in the world. Oh, here it is. Randomize elements, take a vector, whatever's. All right, this function's weak sauce in here. Need to put it right in the good place, like kit.h. Randomize elements. But that, oh, the one, the one drawback to putting it here is that it has to be a template function. That's all right. Template class T randomize elements takes a vector of T's. It restores its rand index. But it Probably. Where else am I going to use this? In area. Hmm. I guess this could just restore the DRAND index. That's fine. What does it not like about this? Oh, duh, void. Randomize elements. Ah, see, I'm just, I'm thinking like, man, this would be simpler if I took this out and that out, but both of the cases where I'm gonna be using this, I do want it to I guess I could give it like a function to use for random. Like DRAND U. Too complicated, too complicated, not gonna do it. I'm just gonna leave this out as it is. There, now we got a randomize elements function. Gonna have to go use it in world. all the way back, area patterns, here we go. Now we're gonna randomize these elements as well.
Or I could just to choose a random index. Whatever, either way, puzzle tiles. <clears throat> puzzle tiles. All right, so the puzzle tile is swordless. We're going to use K tile unlit pillar. Otherwise, we're going to use the K push pillar. We also need one more tile for this regular tile. So we'll go bool first equals false. The first one, wait, first equals true. After we're done, first equals false. Now, if first we're using puzzle tile, and otherwise, we're using regular tile. That should be all, yeah. So that should make one hidden tile. We should have four pushable, four pushy things. And it would be it would be really nice actually before I do anything else to see this pillar as it is so I want to do a different type of graphic or whatever for this pillar I'll use the unlit pillar tile this one's pretty pretty distinguishable Okay, cool. Yeah, so that one is, we got these three regular tiles, and we've got this other tile right here, which is pushable, but... Yeah. Okay. So, the next goal is to make it so when I walk against this thing, player has a smart is smarter about how he pushes against things right right now the player walks nicely around stuff so as if, I, if I'm walking next to something he'll just like walk around and depending on the last direction you are walking in um, see this it's just smooth movement um, I need to make it so if you're if you're sort of like dead on like if you hit this at, a, at the right angle you're not on the edge of it or whatever. If you're on the edge of it, I still want you to walk around. But if you hit it right in the middle, I want the player to stop and start pushing for a moment, and then the, the pillar moves in whatever direction you push it in. After you move it once, you can't move it again, just like the Zelda one. Okay, so we got everything set up. Now I just need to start working on the collision system to get this all to work. One, 
one um, thing that I'm going to be doing while I'm working on this collision system anyways is to work on, I want to make you, so when you slide like this around things, if you're colliding, I want you to move a little bit less. So since I'm going to be in that section of the code anyways, I've always thought it kind of sucks that you, you move so quickly around things. You should be moving a little slower if you're colliding with stuff. So this is all the move system. And move system, oh wait, let's go to the right place with the move system. It's, it's probably move system, move. Yes, it is. It's move system, move. This is where it moves your X or your Y. And then this pathfinding part, when once pathfinding is called quasi pathfinding. P dot X plus equals pathfind X. Which is Actually, I think this is supposed to be times i. Is that right? Would that be right? Pathfind x is the absolute value of v dot x, which is your... Which is the overall movement. You want to move this much. V ink. Is that it? Is it V ink? <laughs> Rigged! <laughs> v ink, though. Oh, oh, you yeah, no, no, this is definitely not times i because each iteration. Each iteration moves the posi player's position slightly. Shut down the aristocracy. We must not have this unfairness. Come on, comrade. I really think this is all this needs right here. Is if it's pathfinding, it needs to move at like half, half the rate, or maybe like phi ratio times the rate. So this should make it so instead of running at full speed around stuff, you run at like half speed when you're doing this quasi pathfinding so yeah everything seems normal I'm moving at normal speed now if I move here all right yeah nice it does it moves it slightly moves slower when you're on the edges of stuff but I do think that was a little bit too much so um, I should probably make this a const float anyways const float um, Path find speed, whatever, is like, let's go with the phi ratio. Let's try that. What's up, Barangia? I know, sorry about the whiz jibs not working on my chat, but if you got your own chat running with um, franker faces, that, that whiz jib will work. Still, or it should still work. Whoops. 
This is supposed to be pathfind speed. Pathfind speed times ink. Pathfind speed times ink. This is great, and this is so awesome. This is a little touch I've been meaning to put in the game for a long ass time. It really helps. There's a lot of situations where I've, I've been like on the edge of a screen or something and I just accidentally walked off because because you pathfind too fast. And that's pretty good. I like this this ratio right here. The fire ratio works pretty well for Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna try again once at point five. That was that might have been better. Might have felt a little bit better. No, it feels too slow. Yeah, it does feel too slow. Okay, point six one eight. It is sweet. Okay, we can pathfind a little slower. The next step is to make it so you can push stuff. Okay, so how am I gonna do that? I want I want the player to um if if you're dead on or maybe even not at first, yeah, I won't even make it a dead on at first. What's most important is that you just stop. You stop path, you don't pathfind. If you're pushing. So yeah, if you have push. Um, basically, if Rock didn't have the pathfinding flag, take away his pathfinding flag here, he should just stop on a dime when he hits stuff and just walk towards it. That's kind of what we want for this pushing. Yeah, there. I'm getting stuck on the edge of everything. But that's alright. kind of what I want to see. Okay, good. So, I know that works. Um, basically, I need a, I needed some kind of move flag called like can push or something. And if you can push and you're lined up with the thing you're trying to push See, this is where we have to trigger something we have to trigger the fact that or or oh oh the player could get um like an is pushing flag maybe the collision would be is pushing and then You would need to trigger something in like the collision system. Yeah, let's okay, let's let's do this right now. I need to make something so it triggers the move or triggers the some kind of push activation
Okay, so let's, for, let's take away his pathfinding flag once again. This makes it pretty easy to do this at first. Uh, and then this will be like a, we'll get like a bull pushing flag. And I guess we need to do like a, oh uh, yeah, it would be pretty easy to just grab the entities that you're, you're pushing towards. Okay, let's do this. Bull pushing equals false. Bull pathfinding equals false. Pushing equals false. And uh, here we'll go. Pushing equals true and break. This will become something different though. So we'll go push. If pushing So first we're going to look for an entity to push and it would be what's up Mars of Power Bellazio So it would be like we already got a vector it's vec3 Get points minus one. I'm good, man. How are you doing? Yeah, we'll make a vec to you to normalize. What's wrong with that? Oh. U is v dot x, v dot y. You're great. Nice, man. Why is that? Preparing to take a couple things because I'm leaving to Tokyo in a couple days. Yeah, buddy, vacation. Awesome. All right, so the four E it is E dot ID. The mask is e dot move dot mask. Position is the entity's position plus u, and the size is it doesn't even need to be one pixel, I guess. Wide. I'm trying to figure out what you need. It's hot as hell there, really, right now, or is it just in general? <laughs> Define hell. I think a V3F of 111 would actually work here. Because you're pushing against whatever. This would be a little bigger than 1. 4, 4, 4. Okay, we got a collision EID. If collision EID is greater than 0. Then we want to go collision system activate. This will activate the pushable flag. Okay, collision activate push. I thought I had to activate push. Uh, 
No, I don't. We need another flag. We must need have another flag. <laughs> Teak. <laughs> uh, I think I'm all, I'm gonna be out of out of flags here. This is, this is the I've used up every flag I can I've gotten here. I should I gotta go thirty. I gotta go to sixty four bit flags. Oh, it's not pushable. I just want K collision um, activate push. Yeah. Activate push is nine. This one's ten. This one's eleven. Yeah, zero through eight. Nine, ten, eleven. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Recompile that. Oh, is this the Rolling Stones patch? Yes, it is, man. How'd you know? How'd you know? We're rolling stones around, pushing them around, rolling them, baking them. We're baking. It's the baking episode. Collision activate push. Oh, which means I need to change constants.cpp. Thanks, Ace Suri. All right, so this is going to become activate push. This is K activate push. When's the monkeys patch coming then? That'll be the next one. And lastly, the entity we've created already, this pushable entity needs activate push. All right. This one can't be Beatles. <laughs> All right, now in the collision system, it needs to be able to process the pushable flag. We got K collision activate puzzle. Let's go K collision activate push and we'll make a new function called activate push, which is going to be pretty simple. All it needs to do, well, actually, I'm not sure exactly what we need to do just yet, but setting a breakpoint inside here would be awesome. So we'll go in add blah, blah, blah equals one, set a breakpoint, and then we should be all good to go to test this new system out. This is a new mechanic. You can push stuff. Whoa. You've been able to do this since 1986. We're bringing now to 2016. Pushing stuff. So let's see what happens if I get... No, it didn't work. Oh, it did work. Activate push. Went in the other way, I activate push. All right, cool. We got it working. But why didn't that first way work? Did I do the vectors wrong? You're moving in this. Thing. No, that should be right. No. Oh. I know it's wrong. The move system. I did this math wrong. This math is wrong. This should be the actual size of the entity. Because it has that much size itself that it's being prevented from touching you know the way the collision system works it's got to be collision size and then put plus the u or whatever so if I, now i'm on the side of it oh yeah we got the push activate push
All right, let's make this obvious now. I'm going to take the entity that's being pushed and make this more visual so I can see what's going on rather than having to set a break point and be like, oh, is it working? I can just see instantly. So collision system, activate push is going to make the pillar red. Um, e render sprite set color color 3b red and then schedule something <laughs> be careful boo you don't want to push things too far it's true it's true I really need a flag right here right now we need to do this right now huh um, e dot collision dot flags and equals not collision push or activate push so there that's what needs to happen we need to take off the push flag once you push it but I want to comment that out for a second because I still want to see all the places this can be pushed from the angles and make sure it's all working and stuff so I'm setting it to red and then I'm gonna take a sec after a while I'm gonna tint it back to white so I'll go E render sprite stop all actions and then just run an action that tints it to red and then waits and then so we're doing a sequence create um, this would be tint to Create. The duration is quite quick. Zero. It instantly goes to red. It delays a while. One second. And then goes back to white. Instantly. Actually, no, we'll go over a half second. I don't think that. A point one second. Why not? There, so it should turn red and then turn back to white. Whenever I'm pushing it. So we can dial in when, when should be a push and when should not be a push. See right there? That should not be a push. Something weird's going on right there. Did you guys see that? And it did it to me this a while ago too. Oh, it's Jib! Ha! <laughs> Jib's pushing it. Oh, I was I didn't notice. Yeah, see, Jib pushed it. Cool. Well, at least I know it works with any entity. Good job, Jib. Yeah, push it some more, Jib. That would be kind of a funny puzzle to have to have Jib push something, but it would be hella difficult, and it would be so not obvious. Okay. Well, that's kind of good to know that I wasn't weirdness. It was just the fact that Jib was pushing it, which was kind of cute, actually. He's trying to help, man. He's trying to help out. He's doing a good job of it, too. He's doing a great job, Jib. Good job, man. Gold star, Jib. You're up to five gold stars now. So, and, and there needs to be a move component that's like, hey, I can push things, you know, and an entity needs to be able to push. Let's do it. Come on, we need this flag right now. Constance.h, we need another flag. This is what happens when you make a, a new mechanic or a new system. You're adding a lot of flags and data and stuff and getting things moving and working. So we got move. Um... Can push. There. An entity can have the can push flag to be able to push stuff. So if I really want to, later on, I can always add, I can make Jib be able to push stuff later if I want. But for this is going to make it a lot smarter. The system is just going to be like, okay, for now, Rock can push stuff. You have a question about Jib. Will the game story reveal anything about Jib's backstory? 
Yeah, okay. This is something where I have a whole nother game planned. So I have, uh, I do have some ideas about Jib's backstory. So no, um, from Jib's perspective, he wakes up on Songbringer. This is thousands of years after he's been alive or, you know, alive as a, as a robot, as a human as well. Um, he wakes up with no memory. So somebody, somebody erased all of Jib's memory before he got stowed away and chucked onto Songbringer. So he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know what his name is. His real name's not even Jib. He wakes up on Songbringer and Rock names him Jib. That's how the story begins for Songbringer. So no, you're not actually going to find out anything more about Jib's backstory in this game in Songbringer. Yeah. So, but he's totally mysterious, right? You don't know. He's a he's an old ass robot who has no memory. And I'm going to try and make that clear in the in the intro cutscene that that you know, the Jib Jib has been named Jib by Rock. But I don't know if that'll be totally clear or not, but will, I'll try. But yeah, I have a totally a whole idea about how to do a, a whole game just for Jib. So, um, yeah, through that game, I think I'll try and tell Jib's story some. I hope this all works, you know. I, I'm trying to build kind of like a... I guess this is intellectual property, right? This is... I'm building an IP here. But I just want to make a, a world that I can come back to with lots of different games. If this first game, Songbringer, succeeds, you know, I can come back to this world and keep adding things, more story to this world and stuff. Plus one for having plot plans, yeah. You do the same thing? Cool. Nice. Uh, oh, at the new games Kickstarter? Space my name? I will definitely be announcing that when, when I get to that point. If I can get to that point, right, where let's say Songbringer does succeed and enables me to make more games in the series, I will definitely be announcing the next Kickstarter I do. And I'm actually quite excited to do another Kickstarter. It was such a thrill. I loved it. Yeah, but yeah, I promise I will announce everything whenever I know that it's a for sure. So K move. We got another flag for movement. This is called can push. Alright, so we got that compiling and stuff. And now I can go to rocks thingy. Rocks data. You got your mom interested? Nice, man. Thank you, Space My Name. Thank you, Space My Name. I really appreciate that. No, I really do. And I, I hope I say it enough, but I'm just one person. So for you to be, say, anything encouraging at all and to want to help, it's so, it touches my heart, man. Thank you, really. And thank you for everyone that's already backed this project and and backed me in general in any any fashion whatsoever, or even just backed Songbringer. I think it's so it's so humbling to have so many other people interested in this game. I, I am quite humbled, man. And thank you, really, from the bottom of my heart. And that goes for everyone. Everyone out there watching this on YouTube, watching on the stream right now, I appreciate you. She's always loved the classic Zelda. Sweet. Thanks, Marza. I appreciate it, man. Marza's been here since the very beginning. Same thing with Alex Pita. Those guys encouraged me back in the day before he, before the Kickstarter, the first Kickstarter. This was over a year ago. Thanks, Aldongs. Yeah. Yep, and I hope this game once it's all once this game's all finished, I really do hope it's just a, a an awesome epic game, you know. That's fun to play more than once. You know, I'm really interested in the replayability of it all. That's why this is a procedural game. It's because I want to be surprised every time I play it. So I hope this I hope this whole vision of Songbringer actually turns out the way um you know as good as it can be. And I think it I think it's on the right track. I think it's it's getting there. You know, once I finish all these enemy, all the enemies, the dungeons, and all the items you're gonna get in the game, I think it's gonna be pretty f full of everything. Like at that point, it's got it's full of you know its items and enemies and stuff. At that point, 
I think it's going to be even more fun. Okay, so I got the can push. I gave Rock the can push flag. All right, so now we'll go into the move system once again and make it so it doesn't trigger this pushing unless unless you it has the push flag. I'm thinking this probably should be its own statement, like um, if has can push, do pushing and break. But I'm trying to see what other little things here in this logic that needs to be incorporated into this as well. Do I plan on adding in any content that isn't guaranteed to appear in every playthrough? Yes. That kind of thing could add to the surprise factor. Yes. Yeah, there's going to be stuff where you, you're not going to see it in every playthrough. And... Um, and thankfully, a lot of that comes from the Kickstarter as well. Like some people uh, pledged enough that they could design their own NPC and design their own collectible items. So those two things won't be in every single world. Um, and then there'll be other stuff too. And the thing about that stuff is it's it's like icing on top of the cake type stuff too. So even after I release the game, I can always throw in more Easter eggs and nobody will even know until you find an Easter egg and you'll be like, whoa, I found an Easter egg or I found some unique thing that's only in this world. I can totally add that to the game after it's already released. And um, it won't, those, kind of, those kinds of things won't really affect the overall gameplay. You know, I will never do anything that will ruin speedrunners. Like, I won't even fix bugs that are, are cool things that are glitches for speedrunners. Um, cause I think that's, that's probably the most important thing. Once your game is released, I do not want to pull the rug out from people. And you, I saw that happen with, um, with Hyper Light Drifter. Hyper Light Drifter is a phenomenal game. It's so amazing. But w one of the problems they had when they released their game was that they, they made it so difficult. Hyper Light Drifter is so freaking difficult at first that so many people complained. And the thing was, they really just didn't play it enough with the people that were in their fan base. They released it all and said, here it is. And then, you know, they, they, it was too hard. So they tried to they tried to make it easier. And so they were changing very important gameplay things after they released their game. And like, for example, refilling they refilled all your health packs whenever you went back to the, the warp points. And that totally that totally pissed some players off because they're like, dude, you just it was so hard at first, and now it's so easy, and so it's just something you never want to do. You never really want to change your your important gameplay elements after you've released it. Yeah, unless it's an experience breaker. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. If it's an experience breaking thing, then yeah, you got to fix the bug for sure. And and in that case, like, sorry, speedrunners, I did have to fix this bug, but yeah. In general, I don't want to change anything in this game once it's released that will affect, you know, speedrunners if if possible. So let me think, let me just take a look at this. If I go like this and um, say, basically all I want to do is say if E dot move to flags and K move can push. Pushing equals, equals true, break. Is that logic right? I'm trying to think of this here. This thing here was like, okay, if you're at the end of your collision systems iterations, break. Which is kind of, which is kind of stupid. Because you're about to break anyways out of the loop. This might actually be totally unnecessary, that statement right there. Yeah, totally. You you only get to have one initial release. It's true. Yep. Which is which is which would be which would, would be nerve-wracking for me, but I'm pretty confident in in the in the fact that I can get this game pretty well settled. You know, once I get all the features implemented, it, I you know what it is? I have you guys that's probably why I'm not so nerve wracked because you guys play the game and you're do all you guys that are playing the beta for Songbringer. I appreciate you guys so much because you find things that I don't, and it makes me feel confident that I can that once all these features are done, um, 
you guys will we can we can all play the game for like a month or whatever and i think a month with all the features totally done and i think it i think it will be a pretty stable game there really won't be much left to be editing changing there won't be so many glaring bugs to fix and stuff like that it will mostly once at once a month goes by with features complete and being well beta tested there really won't be that many you know there'll be mostly minor bugs and things that are most like visual and stuff like that all right so this one i can pretty much ignore Yeah, so if you have the pathfinding flag, it breaks. Or if you don't have collision, it breaks, of course. Okay, I think this is actually right. The only other thing I need to add to this logic is to say if lined up. Let's see if this works though in general. So now, Rock should be able to push stuff and Jib should not. Basically that's that's all that that's all that's been done. Alright, so rock. Yep, I push that. Let's see what happens when Jib touches it. Now, yep, yeah, Jib was touching it pretty solid there for a second. Nothing happened. So I go back and push it myself, yep. Now that's weird. Oh, I have to let go. That's really weird. Why do I have to let go? Oh, obvious. It's very obvious why I have to let go because it was already white red. Yeah, just to, you know, while I'm debugging this system, just make it visual first. Um, yeah, so I think it's I think it's already it's just was already pushing. So Yeah, I mean I, I can test that really quick. Just go to the collision system and like this, like uh, Salad Dongs was saying, I basically need to release this so I don't push too much. And then, yeah, I should be able to walk against it and it will light up red immediately. Yeah. But now it doesn't have the pushable flag anymore. That's fine. Okay, now this the system needs to start getting smarter um, so that the movement is still really, really nice and smooth around stuff if you're not pushing. So right now it breaks into this pushing mode no matter what. And that's wrong. This collides function. I called it a function. This collides macro. I think this collides macro actually should be smarter. Yeah, let's make the collide the collides macro smarter so we can it can return what entity it's actually colliding with. And that'll that'll be able to make the whole pushing a lot smarter. So let's create a collision EID.
And this um, this macro now, I'm going to add one more parameter to this macro so it stores the collision needed. Collision EID equals collision system get collision. If that's greater than zero and move system blah, cool. Now we're storing that. This will cause um, all this stuff to fail, but I can go and go collision EID. Oh, and I want to guarantee that it also resets that to zero. Yeah, it's the first thing it checks. If I were to swap these orders right here, that would break all this, but it's good that they're not swapped. So. Now we're storing that. Okay, good. This is going to make this pushing a lot more simple. So I don't need to look for an entity to push. So yeah, if you can push and the entity that you're trying to push entity get collision component for collision id dot flags and k collision activate push so basically if the entity can be pushed put pushing equals true break if pushing I'm glad to get rid of this janky code here. That stuff, that was just, that was error prone right there. Very error prone. So really all this does now is if you're pushing, you just activate push. So this might even, I might even put this all in right there. We'll see how that goes. Now, now the system should be a lot smarter. It should do its push. I got it again, cool. Nope, it's not working though. It's not allowing me to pathfind, wait. Oh, it's because I turned off pathfinding for him totally. So, oh yeah, so rocks data, once again, his data needs the pathfind flag. He has pathfinding, he has can push, and he's restricted by the area's boundary. Hello, Z Twitch. So this time I should be able to go up here and like pathfind around stuff still. Yeah, cool. I'm pathfinding. Everything's looking good. Now if I go here, it pushes for a moment and then triggers me into pathfinding right away. That's not really what I wanted to happen, but it. I want I want the player to be able to stop, push against something. I also want the player to be able to push something for a moment before it actually triggers the, the push. So once again, this system has to get even a little bit smarter now. Um, like how would I make this system better so that like a half a second would have to go by before it would trigger? You would need to be like... What is the simplest way to do that? I could like give a, I could give the the player's move component um, like a 
a number of ticks or whatever that's been pushing and then make sure that, or 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 push start time yeah push push start time or just push i could just add a, the the delta the current delta which i don't have here in this function but i can add i can put i can pass in the delta and then say all right you're pushing right now so add to the push timer which would add the current delta to that. What other ways would I do this? I'm not exactly sure yet. So what I'm gonna work on is the next part. I'm just gonna make it so this whole system actually is, is complete in the sense that when you do move a push component, it, it's, it actually does its push thing. Right, so if I'm pushing... to see is um i want to see when i when i when it turns red all there for a second i just want to see the entity move away so if i push here from the from the right i want to see that pillar move to the right and the it remove its activate puzzle oh actually that's the first thing i just want to remove activate puzzle That'll be, that's basically completing the whole system right here. It just it's gonna unlock the doors now. So right now the doors are locked. I'm stuck in this room. What the heck's going on? I don't know. This must be a puzzle. Hopefully people realize that. But this uh, and then you go you push this. Oh, and it also needs to check completion. Um, that is uh, collision system check completion. Hmm, actually activate puzzle. Which is, I could I could call activate puzzle from activate push. I don't really see the problem with that. It would be best to go collision system activate e dot id. Flags, K, collision, activate, puzzle. I don't know, something about that seems wrong. I'm going to go back to the source where I call both these and just activate them both. The other option I have is to not even put a flag here and it would activate both the push and the puzzle at this point. Actually, it's just way more simple there. Yeah, it takes activate flags. Doesn't matter if it's flag zero, it does everything. So there, that, that entity has a push and a puzzle flag. So once I go here and push it, it should unlock the doors. Right, these doors are locked. Can't get out. That didn't work. Oh, did I give it the puzzle flag? Push pillar, 
It has activate puzzle. Oh, this thing checks its hit points. Mm, that's right. So I guess it would be smarter if the activate push would immediately set its hit points to zero. So if we have a health component, it instantly becomes zero, and we trigger activate puzzle. Something about this still seems wrong because I'm not calling this function. I guess we can just call it that way. Collision system activate e.id k collision activate puzzle. Okay, there. I think that's a little more appropriate. All right. So now, this time, when I push it, it'll turn red, the doors will unlock. Nice. All right, it worked. So this system is now working. I can push something. Well, it's not pushing it yet, but that's the next thing. Let's make it so it actually pushes this entity. So we need a push direction. There's only four directions I want to be able to push stuff in. Let's just go push her. K West. I guess we'll go K Dur West. The vector is gonna be vector from compass direction pushter. The movement, mm. ooh. Okay, I was just thinking about how the collision will work. So it needs to move its collision. Like don't don't push if if entity cannot fit at destination 
And then we also need a either like an iterative move function, which which moves it slightly every single tick. Okay, besides th thinking about all these details and stuff, I'm just gonna start with the basics. I'm gonna start with a simple action which doesn't move its collision at all. It just moves its the render sprite. So the sprite's just gonna move. V.x times equals the block size. And v dot y times equals block size. So I'm going to do a simple move by, move by create over the course of 1,000, 1,000, about two seconds, um, delta position, V, now you can tell I cheated, this whole thing is dependent on this push dir west, I'm just making it west at first so I don't have to figure it out, so let's see if that works, I just want to make it so it, it, it looks like it moved. It's not perfect yet because the collision is going to be totally messed up. Okay, we can illustrate that with these red. So I didn't push at all. What's up with that? Oh, because it has a position component. Ooh, man, this seems, ooh, this seems so wrong for me, but I'm thinking about doing a quick tick. Oh, I guess it could have a move component. Oh. Oh my God, it could have a move component. And I guess it would need an input component too. Yeah, this is the right way to do it. Oh my god, this is the right way to do it. All this jankiness, we can get rid of this. We need a move component and an in input component. It's going to set its input like, okay, I'm being pushed, so I have the input of being pushed in this direction. And then after it's done, it'll I'll set a timer so it can turn off its input. Done! Okay, entity text. The push pillar now has an input component and a move component. Let's like let's mirror something else that also has input. Yeah, input is going to become only flags four though, so we can only we only go in four different directions that it can, it can be pushed. Uh, move component. Let's get something like that first. Mask of default. Yeah, that that includes water and things like that. Here's a speed acceleration, deceleration. I think an acceleration should be zero. Hmm. I guess I'll leave those for a moment though. No pathfinding. This thing should never pathfind. It really doesn't need the boundary flag, I don't think. Okay, now if I run this, it shouldn't do anything weird. Like it shouldn't move the push component for all for some reason. Its input will be zeroed. It'll be waiting for input. This thing's ready to have input. It's ready to move. It's just nothing's moving yet. So now, if we give the entity a, co 
compass direction, E input Wait a minute, wait a minute, this is wrong. Something's wrong here. Is it AI component? The AI system itself has this thing where it applies applies input. And yeah, it goes in E A I editor and then it goes set button yeah, okay, it does use set button down. And this is, since this is such a nice little bit of code here, I'm going to reuse this. The input component should be able to do this itself. It doesn't need an AI to do that. We need we want to make a function called set button down, given a direction. So void set button down for compass dir. is down. Now going back to input component on CPP, set button down. Switch the dir. Okay, dir south. And all these comma trues become comma is down. There we go. All right. There we go. Now we put this function in the proper place. This should have been here the whole time. Input component set button down. Compass direction D. South would put your button down. West, left. North, up, southwest. All right. I like it. Now back to AI system. We're going to use this method now. Set buttons down. Or compass direction e dot ai dot dir. This is down true. Get rid of that. And the first thing to do is make sure that all the entities in the game are not broken all of a sudden. So I need to go look at some AI, make sure they're still behaving correctly, still moving along walls correctly, and all that kind of jazz. Hmm. And uh, yeah, we'll get back to this in a second. Man, I'm so glad I'm not trying to rework a different move system or something. Okay, cool. Yeah, they're not they're not able to move against those pillars. It's a good sign. They're still acting how they normally do. You should still be able to fly over. Yep, that guy's flying over the sky. Cool. These guys, these are these are you guys should not be able to walk off of the sky. Yeah, they're all good. Not walking on the pillars. Everything's cool. All right, good. I didn't break it. Next up, let's make sure. Let's make so that the um, the pushable pillar can now set a button down for its direction, which is pushter is down true. And then the whole secret here is to do a schedule tick schedule. 
wait a minute, this might not work. Might have to set button down a bunch of times. Let's see if that works. The initial push. If this does work, I mean, let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm not even sure if it moved a single pixel, but I think that's because it. It needs to be called every single tick. Which I guess would mean that it needs an AI. Because input system uh, tick I guess it could be clear directions. She's called from the when you use the sword, top at the blink, the dash, the charge, the meditate, the lighter, and the palm. None of the none of these. Why why would it possibly be clear in the direction? Let's see if that's it though. I'm trying to discover what is causing the entity to stop. If anything's trying causing it to stop. I don't know. So the first thing to do is start debugging. In the collision system. First thing I want to do is set a breakpoint here. Now just make sure it's getting there, first first thing. And then I want to look at its ID. What ID number is it? And um, and then I'll go pay attention to that ID in other systems to make sure it still has that, that input component and all that. Okay, we're getting here. The EID is 225. And yes, it is setting the button down. Apparently. Let's check it one more time. Yep, set button down left. Let's make sure that's getting working. Okay. It appears to be working. The next thing I want to do is go watch the move system. E.ID is 225, and we don't have a pushable flag anymore.
That should be pretty automatic. Could be able to watch once both systems, right? All right, let's make, let's watch this. E, oh, damn it, I hate it when this happens. Can't see what I'm trying to debug. But let's see if we still have input now. Hopefully this one works. Oh, thankfully it worked. All right, so this is maybe a whole tick later. I'm not exactly sure. We've got button size one. I've got, that means I probably have one button down and it's probably the up button or whatever. Input's not locked. Technically, it's idle. Uses sort its last position. Oh, it has to be alive to move. Okay, that makes sense. It's just it wasn't alive. Which means I want to trigger the puzzle after it's all done. So this is gonna come like in this schedule function here. So let's see if that works. So now we, hopefully the, the entity pushes itself. It's not gonna unlock the doors anymore. Well, that'll be next. The next thing you do. Oh, cool. It worked. I'm not sure why it stopped. That was funny. But yes, it worked, and it didn't need to add, give it an AI component. All right, let's take a, let's schedule a function to stop it all. We're gonna schedule. We want to capture the EID. Schedule it after maybe like this. Hmm. Yeah, two seconds. That's right. And we're gonna after this is all said and done, we're gonna stop movement and trigger the puzzle. Okay, let's see if see if that's going right in the right direction. We should move the entity for a minute and then and then it'll stop and the doors will open. All right, that worked fine. Pushed for a, quite a long time though. So let's, let's make that more like half a second. And it needs some kind of cool sliding stone noise too, like. All right, it's starting to work. The systems are all starting to come together. This is pretty good. I don't need this turning it red anymore. It's not perfect or anything yet, and it's this whole system, but uh, 
so what would be the next step? I guess the next step would be doing the right direction. So if I go and I push this, you know, from the right, it should push to the east instead of the west. Which I want to see what would actually happen. If I were to... Yeah, <laughs> what the hell was that? Why did it... Oh. I guess it just didn't care. I think there's a compass direction from vector. Which does allow flags. So what I want to do is call this function and give it the flag. I hope this function works. We'll see if it does. The vector would be my position minus the player's position, or the player's position minus my position. We get the first hero minus this entity. So if the hero was on the right, the entity was on the left, that would be a compass direction east. I think that's right. And then this is going to be e dot input dot o flag. Yeah, flags. Or maybe it's more more prudent just to go input dot allow four. But nah, this way you can do custom. Maybe I will create an entity at some point that can move diagonally being pushed. Using the direction here. Push to her is compass direction from vector, blah blah blah. I'm like, why did it slide to the left? Okay, I'm pushing from the below, this should slide north. That was whack. Must be the wrong direction. Opposite world. Yeah, it's it's just opposite. Yay! It's one push that looked right. I'm just worried about this one push that was, I was kind of like in the, sort of in the, on the edge of being like here-ish. Yeah, see that? It pushed to the left even though I was primarily below.
So we'll start with Dirt Nun. Let's do a smarter uh, direction. This is going to be like rock solid. I want this to be just, you know, the math that always works. Um, first thing, if the player... Hmm. If the entity's position dot x plus half of the entity's width I mean if the hero If your position dot x is greater than the very edge of the other entity, this is definitely going to be pushed or west. Otherwise, if your position is on the other side, completely outside of that thing's collision, the dir is east. Otherwise, if your y is less than its y, pushing north otherwise you're pushing south okay so now should I, be able, I should be able to start like beyond the very corner and it should still be smart about how it pushes <laughs> Anyways, I'll, I'll fix this all up later. I'm thinking about taking a break at this point. Got to get some dinner. So I'm, I'm done pretty good though on this whole new system. To, this is a new mechanic to be able to push things. What I got to do now is, is refine this whole system now. For example, this pillar here should be black. It should be exactly like these ones. So you won't be able to tell. And that, that's what will make it an actual puzzle. Is the fact that you have to figure out which one to push. The next thing I need to do is like make it uh, push correctly. You know, like so if I'm pushing from the very corner, it still works. Um, and also, uh, you know, make it push the right distance. Right now it's not moving that enough. It's like it should move a whole tile width. And that will make it a little more... I don't know, it'll look, look, I think it'll look a bit more right. Um, and then the last thing I really want to do is make it so you have to line up with it too for it to work. So if you're like this and pushing against a, a, a pillar from the very corner, that doesn't physically work, right? You wouldn't be able to physically get your momentum behind it. So pushing there on the very edge shouldn't work, right? It should just pathfind around like it's doing right there. Um, so. That's the refinements I need to make to this this new system, and I will be making those tonight. And I will implement this and put it in the game, and we'll have another way to solve puzzles. This is be cool. There'll be a lot of different kind of puzzles I can create now. I've got the puzzles you can do with the lighter, and lighting things on fire. I've also got puzzles now where you can push things. So just those two mechanics right there, the fire and the um, and the pushing, I can create. And in, in, literally an infinite amount of puzzles. It's just, it's nice to have that variety of two different methods of two different systems or whatever. So, I think that's probably about going to be about all there is for Songbringer's puzzles, right? Those are the two mechanics it will use mostly. No, no, no. Actually, no, that's not true at all. 
there's a lot more gates that they could use for puzzles. There's the bombable pillars. There's using bombs for activating puzzles. There's um, there's there's puzzles where you would need to use your top hat. There's puzzles where the ghost sword could get you through it. So yeah, there's there's a ton more puzzles that could be created, but this will be a good system to start with. So um, that's it for today's stream, everybody. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you all, and uh, we'll catch you next time.